thousands of people lose thousands of pounds as a holiday point scheme all but collapses. It's a con job. I tell you this, a bloody con job. Sorry for swearing, but I, I feel very angry about it. It's yet another holiday sales scandal from a resort that has a history of heartache. Tonight we reveal those behind this £150 million scandal. And we go undercover in the Canary Islands to expose the latest sales pitch. It's a holiday home in the sun for three or four weeks. It's um, appreciating asset of 12%, that's why people buy it. Holiday makers are going for it, just like they did before. So what's going on? And why is nothing being done about it? Tonight we're following a story of offshore companies and hidden bank accounts, of secrecy and despair. It's a tale that's left thousands out of pocket and made millions of pounds for others. It's all centred on this resort in Lanzarote. November 2004 and Phil Crucy is due to pay his annual fee to a holiday points company called the International Vacation Club. But he's heard all is not right with IVC. I'm a bit been on the fence, been in a quandary, uh, because I have to pay my fees for 2005 by the end of December, um, and if I don't, then I know that I'm going to lose my £14,000 investment, uh, and if I do, I could lose whatever it is, six or £700, and uh, I guess the problem I've got is that I don't know whether I'm being taken for a, a sucker or not at the moment. Phil pays £14,000 to IVC for points which could be exchanged for accommodation anywhere in the world. But now, all that's on offer on IVC's website is the resort in Lanzarote. I would like to look again, say in January, February, which is when all their special offers came up last year, uh, and it's when I managed to, to book other places as well, so I'll, I'll sort of uh, sit on the fence on that one just now and, and just see what, what comes in, in the new year. To do that though, you have to pay up first. Um, yes, I know, <laughs> I know, don't keep reminding me. Peter Mason, who lives near Cardiff, didn't pay the annual fee, so he's forfeited his whole investment and ended up with nothing. He's one of hundreds of IVC members who've decided to walk away. When I tried to book up this last year in 04, um, the answer we got back, we're unable to help you at this present time. And then I thought, right, they've gone out of business. Then I was shocked because they started sending bills out. And as far as I was concerned, they were out of business. And all the people that probably had some holidays, and, and they're so vulnerable people today, that they'll, they'll go and pay. You know, I thought I was supposed to pay, you know, being stupid. But they get sucked in. People are so stupid today. But why would anyone want to pay IVC thousands of pounds for accommodation they could book themselves? A holiday points system is where the purchaser pays a capital sum to buy points, which is a form of currency, to enable them to book into um, hotels or resorts. Uh, now, IVC is a holiday point system and was offering 700,000 various places to go to worldwide. It is right, though. There's no detail in here at all, no. is there? At the time, Ian and Kay Walsh were sold on the idea. The way that, that they position the scheme is, is that they can make give you absolute guarantee on the quality of the, the holiday and the accommodation and that they can make it a lot cheaper than you can buy it elsewhere in uh, in the marketplace, say Thomas Cook or Lumpoli or whatever. Um, and the presentations are very clever the way that, that, that they do that. Five star quality, 700,000 destinations worldwide and cheap at the price. We were sat in a resort where people owned points and we were talking to other holiday makers and these were holiday makers that had used that system before and were still using it and people there wanted to buy more points. 
So you think, well, it must be okay because these people are already using the system. The IVC points were sold at this holiday resort. Then there was a timeshare complex called Lanzarote Beach Club, or LBC. Many of the buyers already owned timeshare units here and were persuaded by a very slick sales pitch to part exchange them for points. The highest possible standards for your convenience. But this resort had a history of the hard sell. The it wasn't the first time the sales staff had come up with offers that turned out to be too good to be true. It is your own slice of paradise and it's yours forever. With Lanzarote Beach Club membership, you're guaranteeing yourself and your family a future of years and years of the very best and happiest holidays. For many years, the LBC Beach was a well-regarded timeshare life. resort. Then they came up with a scheme involving the empty land next door. Owners were told the so-called LBC2 was going to be an even better complex than the five-star Lanzarote Beach Club. Just more spacious around the yeah. areas, oh, yeah. and plus you had the separate dining area rather than you know all yeah, one room. Yeah. 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 Keith and Betty Barnett from Cardiff videoed the LBC2 show house when they went to see it. They already owned timeshare there. Then they started advertising LBC2. Yeah. I think it was '97 when we went there, and um, they told us what it was all about. Um, mm. Some of the sales staff we'd recognised from before. We'd had eight years of great holidays. Um, pretty much all the promises fulfilled so we had no reason to doubt why mm. this wouldn't be better you know as good as if not better because as you promised. If, if you're living and, and you've had that holiday for eight years and you've had really good times you don't think any you know you think well it can't it can't go pear shape because you've you've already been in the circle and you've enjoyed it. The Barnets thought the new apartment was going to be better than their LBC one timeshare they were so impressed with the luxury facilities they were being offered, they bought an LBC2 villa off plan. Pools were going to be even better than the pools on LBC1. Yeah, it was like a main... Uh, we were going to have our own it. nightclub, we were going to have our own entertainment. You know, everything was just going to be another step up, almost six star if you like. Thousands bought into LBC2, but it hasn't been built to this day. Nearly 10 years since a team of persuasive sales staff encouraged holidaymakers to invest. It's still undeveloped now. Lanzarote Beach Club have always denied knowledge of any new development next door. So could thousands of buyers all be wrong? They did market it as LBC2. I mean, we're not stupid. I mean, they were basically uh, build it. We were buying off plan, weren't we? Yeah, we bought off the plan. There was a layout plan. plan. Pick an apartment. Have anyone yeah. you want. So we picked an apartment. Um, they even told us we could name the plaza. There'd be a competition to enter yeah. the... And, and if you won, they'd pay your management fee for a year, that type of thing. There's further proof in letters sent to LBC2 buyers. They clearly referred to what was promised. And the Barnets have evidence from the salesman on their holiday video. Is it actually going to be called LBC2 or will it have a different name? At the moment, all they did come up with was a charade. The Barnes knew then there'd be no LBC2. I mean, one year they had a guy with a dumper truck yeah. moving oh, mud around on LBC2's comical. plot. That was comical. It made it look as though somebody was working there. Yeah. And all you'd see is one day the same lump of earth had moved from, from there to down there. to here. And it became a joke. You know, everyone said, oh, the earth's moved again. <laughs> I think some authorities ought to be looking into the situation because a lot of people, many thousands, we don't know exactly how many, paid many thousands of pounds, we're heading towards many millions in total, uh, for, for absolutely nothing. So somebody, either the police or the authorities, ought to be investigating this. This is the convicted fraudster who started the Lanzarote Beach Club. His son had an interest too, as we reveal later. <laughs> It wasn't long before the IVC salesman came calling, but this time round the approach was slightly less than subtle. All the staff were originally in LBC t-shirts, and then we went one year and everybody was in an IVC t-shirt. You weren't allowed to call it LBC anymore. Yeah. Everybody only spoke about <laughs> IVC. They didn't like you yeah. sitting on the plaza in your LBC t-shirts. We just put them They on wanted you to have IVC t-shirts. Although they didn't succumb to the IVC sales spiel, Keith and Betty felt the intention was to try and force them out of their timeshare. I just think they were trying to milk as many people for as much as they could before they pulled the plug. 
Yeah. I mean, we said the last year we went with our friends, you know, people that we've met on the plazas, they're winding this place up. They are forcing everybody out mm -hmm. so they can either sell the whole place as a going concern um, to a sort of, you know, um, package holiday type company. Mm -hmm. um, because clearly they were just trying to push everybody out yeah. that wasn't in points. If you weren't in points, they were trying to force you out of your, your apartment, basically. We've obtained a secret recording of the IBC sales pitch made by another concerned timeshare owner. It backs up what the Barnets are saying. IBC is a club, as a company. When it closes, and I say when, I don't know when, but when it closes, um, it closes. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen extremely soon. And the salesman even admitted that LBC2 had been a con. There is no two ways uh, about it. You have been ripped off, and there's nothing I can do about that. We asked IVC about the salesman's comments. They requested full details. We supplied the name, the date, and the place. We've heard nothing more. Peter Mason was one of many who did trade in his timeshare. He enjoyed holidays there for 10 years until the sales team came calling. Well, they really had to persuade me. Other people were doing it, and I was a bit dubious about it. And I thought, go on, he who dares wins. And of course, it was one of the times, well, I dared and I lost. He lost £7,000, as well as his timeshare. Others bought after being enticed to Lanzarote by a free holiday, on condition they attend a presentation. But it wasn't open to anyone. Only couples with a joint income of more than £30,000 who own their own home were welcome. Global, uh, Ian and Kay Walsh spent £14,000 on their free holiday. It's a do-it-now opportunity. So you say, well, we'll just go away and think about it for a week. No, you can't get this deal in a week. You can only get it today. Uh, well, we'll like to take a look at your resort first before we take a decision to buy. No, you can only get this deal today. So, it, so it's done in such a way that although there's not overt pressure on you to... To, to sign the document, it, it's almost that you, you're stupid not to because of the, the, you know, the offer that they're making. Unfortunately for holidaymakers who bought IVC points, they weren't protected by new EU laws which restricted oversellers timeshare salesmen. Timeshare law changed in Spain in the beginning of 1999. Uh, the purpose of the law was twofold. First of all, to ban the taking of a deposit, and secondly, to provide a cooling off period of 10 days. And in that year, IVC started. So the benefit to IVC, of course, was because it's not a timeshare, that they didn't have to give a cooling off period and they were able to take a deposit, which effectively locked in purchases. You just feel when you sign it, you're getting conned, but you get carried away with it, I suppose, at the time. Um, and you think, oh, you know, it sounds like a good idea. I don't know. I think you just have to be, as you say, philosophical about it and say, well, yeah, you know there's a good chance you're going to get conned, but in for a penny, in for a pound, that's what I'd say. Back at the resort, any signs of Lanzarote Beach Club were disappearing. And the members were diminishing too. Timeshare owners who'd resisted the IVC hard sell found they were hit with unexpected bills for special levies on top of their annual management fees. If you added the levies and the maintenance fees, you were paying about £1,500. I mean, that was before you even booked your flights. You know, you expect people to drop so out So what was then. meant to be the affordable luxury the holiday, holiday every year, just where went. you just paid, say, £200 per week owned for your maintenance. So, as Betty says, it became £1,500 before you even bought a flight. And Lanzarote Beach Club's justification? Well, they said the extra levies were needed to pay the club's debts, made worse by dwindling membership. But we found out that £1.6 million of LBC management funds was lent to a company that was profiting from the sale of LBC2 and IVC. Just over a year ago, LBC was wound up, leaving those who'd kept their timeshare with absolutely nothing. People were left very angry indeed. Um, people were paid large sums of money in beginning to join. They paid large sums of money for the levy and then ended up being told, terribly sorry, you can't come here anymore. Everybody's worked for what we've got. You know, we've earned and worked hard and for them just to take it away, just like that, it's, it's so annoying. Um, how would they like it done to them, really? 
I mean, if it had all been down to mismanagement, you could almost say, well, okay, somebody's uh, yeah. made a mistake. But this but is clearly not. orchestrated from the beginning, if you like, mm. to skim people for as much money as they can get. LBC solicitors said at the time that's an absurd claim without any foundation whatsoever. Is there a case to investigate here? We took our paperwork to an accountant who deals with international finance. What if I told you that upwards of £150 million had been lost, and that thousands of people in the UK and hundreds in Wales uh, have lost money? What would that indicate to you? There could be good reasons what's happened to this money. I think the people who invested the money need to know quite what has happened to their investment so that they can make up their own decision on what they do thereafter. So the starting point is you need to see the accounts of the businesses they've invested the money in to understand or begin to understand um, where the money's gone, if it's been lost, why it has been lost and then to look at well is it because of just bad bad management, bad luck, um, or is it because of perhaps some more sinister um, reason? But what about the holidaymakers who'd bought into the IVC promise of quality? The five-star luxury didn't always materialise. We turned up at the hotel in, in Everglades City and um, it, it, it was horrific. Um, there was mould on the walls, <laughs> the room smelt musty. Um, it really was a, a, a two, one two-star hotel at best. In fact, so much so that our friends who we'd booked with us actually booked out and checked in at a hotel across the, the street. I went to Barcelona. Where did we end up? an hour's ride outside of Barcelona. We had to go on the underground every damn morning for an hour. So I was really annoyed about it. St Mary's on the Isles of Scilly, an ideal location for a quiet break. That's what one couple thought when they booked four nights full board at the Star Castle Hotel through IVC. Sarah Whittaker took the booking in an email from IVC's office in Prague. It seemed fine, it was an unusual one because it was out of the blue, we'd not heard from them before, but um, I was quite happy that, that they were going to follow things through, So, um, especially once we'd heard that the guests had booking their flights booked and everything sorted, so I was quite happy with it. The guests came and went last June, but Sarah says IVC never paid the bill of £792. <laughs> Well, I emailed them and faxed them um, on sort of daily basis, a few times a day, just to be irritating because by then I was beginning to assume that they weren't going to pay and there was no response from them. I was a bit worried that the telephone, well, the fax number that I had was in the Bahamas. I started to think, well, that's a bit odd. Um, you know, they're based in Czechoslovakia. Why am I faxing the Bahamas? But, um, you know, companies have offices all around the world, so I just carried on with that, but, but to no response. Now, OEC say the payment was made. Yes, but we haven't received it. Um, they're telling the customers that they've paid, but we haven't received any payment through. Um, as far as our accountants can find, nothing's been received. So did Phil Crucey pay his annual fee? He took the risk and coughed up another £700 to IVC. What I actually paid for uh, at the outset was to be able to use my points anywhere in the world. And um, if at the end of the day, it means I can only use it at Sands Beach Villas. Well, I'll just have to live with that, I suppose. Uh, rather than lose the investment, just make an assessment each year uh, whether or not uh, I'm getting value for money for the membership uh, fee that I'm paying. And I think at the moment I probably it's, it's probably okay uh, for what I'm paying, I would say. But for how long? IVC has now nearly trebled the number of points members need to book during peak season. It means even less for their money. What happens then when members complain? Many find it hard to get answers. I would say in the two and a half years that we've been involved, I've written upwards of 100 to 120 emails asking for clarification of complaints about, and we've not received a single response from IVC uh, to any of those emails. IVC did reply to our email and they assure us they are fully operational. But they did admit that in future they may not be able to offer what they have in the past. They blame difficulties in the current market. 
and the rise of low-cost airlines. They're operational to take money but not to give, give service. Consumer groups say when you look at the whole picture, a pattern emerges. A large number of people bought into LBC1 with great promises and now cannot get anything. Um, a very large number of people also bought into LBC2 and never got anything from, from the day one. And also a large number of people bought into IVC and now can only get one thing compared to the 700,000 that were promised, which is Sands Beach Villas. The whole thing is scandalous. So how do you begin to find out where the money's gone? We've unearthed an extensive paper trail which shows LBC and IVC are built on a network of dozens of linked companies. They're registered not only in Europe but also in offshore tax havens like Liberia, the Bahamas and the British Virgin Islands. Sifting through complex evidence to make sense of it all is the job of a forensic accountant. Well, the, the, challenge you, the challenge you've got you've got here is the paper trail may well start in the UK. Money will go from the UK to a, a bank account abroad, um, but often then that that will be whipped, you know, in nanoseconds across the world. You know, it'll go to Switzerland, it'll go to Turk and Caicos Islands, it will go to uh, I don't know Liberia, it will go to Jersey, it'll go to Guernsey, it'll go in and out of different jurisdictions, and each time you've got to trace that trail. Um, and getting access to that information in those countries can be very, very difficult. Why? Because that access is protected? Yes. I mean, a lot of these places have um, a reputation for, for secrecy. For good reasons. You know, not for any dishonest reasons. The Lanzarote Beach Club was started by a Canadian called David Sterling in 1985. He has some background. In the 1970s, he launched a company in America called Sterling Homex. It made low-cost prefab houses, and Sterling was dubbed the Henry Ford of the housing industry. But Sterling Homex soon collapsed in a mire of illegal payoffs, phantom sales, and personal extravagance. David Sterling was jailed for fraud in a financial scandal that was the Enron of its time. But the Lanzarote venture was a family affair. David's racing driver son, Robbie, had a financial interest too. And Robbie advertised the Lanzarote holiday schemes when he was on the racetrack. Father and son have neighbouring villas on a prime spot on the seafront in Lanzarote. Back home, where Robbie Sterling has numerous other business interests, he lives on a 100-acre Surrey estate. He recently paid more than three quarters of a million pounds outright for this house nearby. And this is David Sterling's house in a swish part of Vancouver. It cost more than three and a half million dollars. Robbie Sterling denies any involvement with LBC or IVC. But we have evidence he was involved until at least 2001. Days after Lanzarote Beach Club was wound up last year, yet another sales operation was launched here. Villas in the complex, now called Sands Beach, are being sold off freehold. It's a kind of fly-to-let scheme. There seems to be no shortage of passing interest. Buyers pay up to £176,000 for a villa, which is then let out to holidaymakers by Sands Beach's own management company. Posing as a couple who wanted to invest, we went to hear the latest sales patter. You get 8% of the, of the purchase price for the first 12 months, 8% for the second year, third year you get 40% of whatever your villa generates. It's already done for me, one hour. And she went on to explain we could expect big returns from the booming property market in Lanzarote. Now then, oh, but we're giving a very conservative number of 12 percent but it's actually a lot more than that that's what the accountants put down it's a lot more than that on this island so just bear with that for now mm. and that's the how much the property is going to go up by correct so over five years that's very minimum but just you know just look on the, the, the if minimum we, if we wanted to sell you mean in, in five if years you wanted to sell in five years you would more than that but mm. we're just giving you a so we'd make over a hundred thousand euros in five years yes. just if we hang on to it that's correct. about 60 yeah, that's not the answer you want. It was a message she was keen to stress as she showed us around. 
Close it's showing you at the side on that breakdown what you're making the first year, the second year, what you're making by just putting at 30%, that's a lot of hard earned money, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's showing exactly what you're making immediately, you put money into it. It's, it's a holiday home in the sun for three or four weeks. It's an um, appreciating asset of 12%, that's why people buy it. And you can sell it after three years if you want. Sounds like a good deal. But we discovered villa prices now are up to 19% less than this time last year. A spokesman for the estate agents told us it's taken time to determine what the correct prices for the villas are in the current market. And the manager at Sands Beach Villas Resort said the Lanzarote Beach Club was merely a client of the resort. Once LBC ceased to exist, that relationship ended. They say they're not aware of any other links. So we have LBC2 which was never built, LBC timeshare, that's gone, and now the IVC point system is drying up. Who then should be looking into all this? Ideally the Canary Islands police. What you typically tend to find is the people who, who have been involved in this sort of activity tend to rely on the basis, well, we've got lots of money, you, you individual, you know, you've given your last 10,000 to buy a dream. Um, you can't afford to chase us on your own and um, as a consequence the individual needs the support from the, the regulators or join together with other individuals who, who, who need answers and then you know uh, set up an action group if you like and then instruct lawyers, accountants and the whole raft of other professionals um, but that is expensive frankly in the apparent absence of an official investigation, hundreds of former LBC owners are launching a joint action soon in the Spanish courts. Meanwhile, the Barnards feel cheated. I can't understand how the Spanish government, knowing mm. what's happened, happened yeah. over the last 15 whatever years, and now suddenly allowing what's probably the same company under a different name, to now resell for probably the third or fourth time the same plot of land. And knowing were, full well yeah, what's happened the way they've performed in the past. So how likely is it that their money has been washed away forever? Well ultimately what you're looking for is the um, the crock of gold or the money at the end of end of the trail and once you've found that um, then it's up to the lawyers um, and, and ideally the regulators to freeze that money. Your starting point really is um, you know the trail needs to start and, and, and you, you need evidence of dishonesty um, to begin to get there. Where does this leave all those who've lost out? Some are ever hopeful. I'm an eternal optimist and maybe it might change next year, maybe that you will be able to go elsewhere next year or the year after, maybe we won't have an IVC next year, I don't know. Ian and Kay Walsh still get calls from other companies offering them free holidays and they're enjoying getting their own back. Jeff and our philosophy is quite simple now. We, we go along to the sales presentations, we take the three weeks holiday, we've had five free holidays now. We have no intention of signing up ever for anything in this marketplace again. And, you know, if we get offered another ten free holidays, we'll take a week. We get a week every year and we enjoy it, we relax. It's in some way our payback for, for being well and truly, uh, uh, what's the word, conned <laughs> by this company.